In the spring of 2019, a New York Magazine investigation sent shockwaves across the country with allegations of a long-running sex cult that began at a college just north of New York City. The magazine's reporting prompted a federal investigation, an arrest, and the eventual conviction of the cult's leader, a father of one of the school's students. Now the victims are telling their stories in a three-part series for Hulu that premieres today. It's called Stolen Youth Inside the Cult at Sarah Lawrence. Here is a preview you and we do want to warn you some of the video you're about to see is disturbing everyone thought Talia's dad was weird then one by one he would get them alone and suddenly they're like he's the best thing that ever happened to me Larry had this really big thing about accountability mistakes that need to be addressed get addressed he would cut up Adderall he keep us awake for long periods of time no, using us against each other to erode any sense of trust I went to the apartment once. I had never seen anything like that before. No! Stop it! It feels like a Twilight Zone. I love you, Larry! I love you! I couldn't tell what he wanted out of it. I had a lot of theories, but none of them were as horrible as what was actually to come. He said to me, I'm building an army. I was explicitly being enrolled in this sexual education, and Larry was my professor. He's been charged with starting a sex cult. Claudia was an escort. In his mind, she owed him money. My jaw hit the floor. She was giving him millions of dollars. I don't even recognize myself. How much worse can it get? I want you to know something. I love you very much. Joining us now is one of the survivors you just saw in that clip, Felicia Rosario. Also here, the show's executive director, executive producer and director, Zach Heinzerling. Guys, thanks both for being here. There's so much to say about this story, but Felicia, I have to start with you. You just told me a story in the commercial break that I sent chills up my spine, which is we had the authors of this New York Magazine piece on in 2019 when it came on. We were shocked by the story, just like everyone else. And you were watching that morning where? Yep, I was watching at the house in Piscataway and I, I used to sleep on the floor on an air mattress that was broken. And then the, your, the show came on and Larry's face was blown up. And you were at Larry's house. Yeah, we, we were at the house, at Scott's house right. in, in Piscataway, this house that we were staying at after the apartment. But Larry was there? Larry was there and I ran and I was like, Larry, you're on TV. So Larry, just to remind our viewers, is the leader of this, I don't know if sex cult is the right term or how do you, yeah. how do you characterize what it was? I wouldn't call it a sex cult. Um, it was more a web of abuse um, where he, he took one person at a time and just like slowly grew his influence and slowly added more and more people um, because there wasn't one thing that he like, quote preached that attracted us to to him it was personal relationships that we all had and i met him as the daughter of my brother's girlfriend i mean the father of my of my brother's yeah. girlfriend um so it was it was individual relationships and then that, that became extremely abusive. Uh, Mika is here in Washington. Mika, I just wanted to make sure you were here because you told me something about what Mika <sighs> said that morning during the interview as you sat in a room with your captor over your shoulder. What did she say? She said, girls, just go home. Mm. Just go home, girls. Mm. And um, Felicia, I, I remember that and I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry about the abuse that you went through. It's unbelievable how terrible experience it must have been um did you did you think to leave when you were watching the segment or what happened i th i thought how like how am i gonna leave how am i gonna get out of here like um yeah but it meant so much to me that you said that mm. and it, re it really helped me you know as things got harder and eventually he got arrested, it, it, just, it stayed with me. And so, so thank how, you. Uh, how, how did you ultimately bring yourself to this point? How did you sort of not only escape the abuse, but how are you dealing with the trauma? So escaping Larry came 
with the FBI, thankfully, with the article that came out and then the investigation that ensued. And um, once Larry was gone, I finally could breathe. Um, I had him in my face 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, and I, without a break for 10 years. Mm. And mm. finally, once he was gone, I was able to start dealing with my situation, what happened, um, and really coming to terms with, um, with, with all of the abuse. And I had a lot of help from uh, therapists and uh, social workers, lawyers, and you know, and then through the series, you, you know, that's, the, it was a huge part of how mm. I'm here today. Well, we're so glad mm -hmm. you're here and we're so glad you're safe and you're Thank sitting you. with us this time in this room. Yes. Um, Zach, let's talk about how you approach this story. For people who don't know it or maybe need a, a refresher on it, it starts with a guy named Larry at Sarah Lawrence College who, for reasons that I just said to you, remain completely unclear to me, was allowed to live in the dorm with the young women there. What happened from there? Well, as you know, Felicia said, it's really a series of individual personal relationships. Uh, you know, Larry was a chameleon. You know, he would find someone, uh, do research on them, understand what their vulnerabilities were, um, you know, how to approach the situation. For some, he was a father figure, others a therapist. You know, Felicia's case, it was more of a uh, boyfriend relationship. Um, so I, I think, you know, the idea of a cult, we think um, there's this person at the top and there's a sort of dogma that is attractive to all. And, and here you have a situation where, um, you know, Larry is using multiple tactics, gaslighting, um, you know, pure manipulation, um, you know, things that we think about uh, are more akin to almost a domestic abuse situation. Um, and for each individual, they had their own process of, of getting involved with Larry and then their own process of getting out. And I think, you know, an important thing to, to think about is, you know, this is really a story of survival um, and a story of human resiliency. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's, it's why, you know, Felicia is here today and why we, we think it's an important story to share. To In share. the process of making this film, did Sarah Lawrence ever explain to you why a grown man, an ex-con, was allowed to live in a dorm with a group of women? They continued to sort of say that, you know, they had no record of him living there um, at the time. Um, you know, I, I hope that more uh, comes out and that there's a sort of further investigation into that. Um, you know, they, they basically didn't engage in our request to, to, to be interviewed. But, um, you know, I think at that time, there was a very liberal policy of, you know, guests. Students were encouraged to have, you know, kind of uh, relationships with, with um, you know, people older than them and encouraged to sort of be outside of their shell. And I think in that environment, uh, without, you know, proper, um, you know, checks in place, that kind of liberal policy obviously got out of hand. I know. I think we can agree that's insane. That we're all for progressive beyond, education, but to let a grown man live in a crazy. dorm with a beyond group of women. Beyond crazy. Yeah. Having had multiple children at colleges living in dorms. Please. Beyond crazy. Felicia, this, yes. is, a, this is a hard question mm -hmm. for me to ask, and it's probably, no doubt, a hard question for you to try and answer. Go ahead. But how is it that a grown woman, a mature woman like mm -hmm. yourself, allows yourself to slowly slide into being a captive? That's a great question. Um, and it's a question that I'm still asking myself, how, how this happened. Um, because, yeah, it, it is, it, it's, looking back now, I, could, I would still say, I would still ask what you're asking. Um, how could it be? But Larry's so skilled, um, you know, like how could he, how could Bernard Carrick let him be best man at his wedding? How could Gorbachev let himself be, you know, led around America by- What? <laughs> by Larry, yeah, he, yes. Um, so- You're kidding. He, no, I'm not. 
and he, I mean, there are pictures, there's like letters, and he know he knows a lot of people in a lot of a lot of influential people in a lot of places, lawyers, police officers, like all kinds of people in the military. So you know, it's. If he's if he's able to get in with people like that, like, and then he decides to target me, yeah, what chance did I have, really? Like, I'm not gonna know better than like you know a, the former head of the KGB or the <laughs> former police commissioner.